Hi, welcome to another edition of One Voice at a Time. This is a show that I do on a regular basis. I invite you to come on, talk about the things that are important to you, whether you want to come on and complain about something, share a hobby, anything that you want to say, we would love to have you, and I hope that you will contact us. Contact information, it will be at the end of the show. We're going to thing, do things a little bit differently today. We're going to have a conversation about important things that are happen, happening Excuse me, that the community should know about. So I have a very special guest, Kevin Coyle. And Kevin, what are all those titles that you have? So hi, Dottie. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Um, I'm Kevin Coyle. I'm the prosecutor for the London Dairy Police Department. I've been that prosecutor for almost 21 years. Um, I'm also a Rockingham County Commissioner um, and have been doing that for uh, almost three years. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm so thankful that you invited me on to talk about whatever you'd like. Well, you know, I think uh, what's on people's mind a lot right now, you see it in the news every day, you see it in commercials. Um, we keep hearing about opioid addiction, opioid problems. And I've heard that New Hampshire has problems as well. Well, we've experienced almost a doubling of our uh, uh, opioid deaths um, over the last mm -hmm. year, which is... And what, what can we tell people about opioids? What are so they? Opioids are, are both prescription and non-prescription drugs. Usually so painkillers? Usually painkillers, pain oxycodone, oxycontin, mm -hmm. um, and uh, other uh, addictive substances, which often uh, lead people eventually to take heroin when they can't get the prescription drugs. Okay. Um, and uh, One thing leads to one another. One thing leads to another. I think one of the problems that is finally being recognized is some of the doctors, um, you know, I've recognized it over the years, some of the doctors have been over-prescribing opioids mm -hmm. um, and probably, you know, ha have led to some of the problems that we've experienced. Um, and, you know, me as a person, I'm very careful not, you know, if I have a, an injury, I, mm -hmm. I try not to take them because they're so addictive. Yeah. I think the doctors are coming to realize that and are being very careful about prescribing them. Mm -hmm. I think you're being too careful. I've heard about a few people who couldn't get pain medication for painful issues. Uh, you know, I, I don't think so. No. I mean, you know, okay. everybody's uh, circumstance is different, but mm -hmm. I think that what has led us to this opioid crisis is, in my opinion, a, a, an overprescription of opioid uh, mm -hmm. medications. Okay. And, and now maybe the doctor, maybe the pendulum has swung uh, a little too far. That mm -hmm. could be, but... You know, I think we're here because of uh, an overprescription mm -hmm. um, problem. Okay, so we're talking about prescriptions right now, and I'm assuming that it would be I went to the doctors, I had something painful that surgery was going usually. on. They give me a surgery, yeah. they send me home with uh, maybe a dozen or whatever yeah. of pills, and I could get addicted. You could, but. More than that, is it, is it always those people who are getting the prescriptions or are other people getting a hold of those pills? It, it, both. Okay. It, it, it's a, it's, it's a um, you know, you have to be very careful who's going into your medicine box. I think that's, mm -hmm. that has been a problem mm -hmm. with some of the our younger people getting addicted. Um, but, well, you also, know, if I just throw something out there, the last place you should be keeping your medications is in the medicine box in the bathroom because it's not even the right temperature and moisture and everything. Mm -hmm. So. Put them someplace where you can see them. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I, and I don't disagree with that. Um, but the uh, the problems that we're seeing now, are some of the people that are ODing are 30 and 40 and 50 years old, oh which is something that we've goodness. never really experienced before. And it's because those people are getting, you know, generally starting with prescriptions. Sometimes mm -hmm. people are getting opioids for back pain or mm -hmm. other things. And you know, I think the doctors are beginning to realize that that may be a problem. And, and I'm hoping that they do. So they're, they're, they're maybe over-medicating themselves initially, not meaning to get hooked on anything, but yeah, they, you know, they really feel they need that relief. They, they, you know, people have surgery and, you know, they're in mm -hmm, pain, and, mm -hmm. and that's expected that they would take that. The problem is they, a lot of times, they don't properly wean themselves off the medication. Um, and, you know, they mm -hmm. become addicted to it okay. uh, all, all too often. And then the doctors will eventually stop prescribing it for them. Now what are they going to do? And now then they either get it from somebody else mm -hmm. that they may know who has it, or they, uh, you know, look at, for it on the street to buy mm -hmm. it on the street, uh, or then they sometimes turn to heroin, which mm -hmm. is, you know, a, a really cheap opioid. Yeah. Before we move on to something else, um, 
what, what's the cost factors of something like that? Getting your prescription where maybe your insurance is paying for it, maybe you're paying out of pocket, but if you have to go out and get that same thing you're, you're paying on the street? On the street, you're paying uh, you know, anywhere from 30 to 50 to $100 per pill, depending on the strength. Wow. Okay. And you know, some people can afford that, but a lot mm -hmm. of people can't. Okay. So those are the people who have actually been prescribed something. Yeah. And now it's gone all out of whack and they need help getting back on track. Correct. And hopefully they're going to go back to the doctor who's going to see something. I, yeah. I don't know. But then we also have the situation where you have that medicine cabinet or the cabinet in your kitchen wherever you're keeping those medications. And maybe you're, you didn't get addicted to them. You took them for a couple of days, but there's maybe another week's worth sitting in there not being used. Yeah. Now, don't we have to watch out that our kids are not going in sure. there to find out what's what available I, to them? The Londonderry Police Department has a take back program. Mm -hmm. So if you're done your prescription medication, bring it into us bring it back. And, we'll, and we'll destroy it okay. so that it doesn't get in the hands where it mm -hmm. doesn't belong. And just a little aside here, also so that it doesn't get in the water supply. Because I know a lot of True. people, um, they think they're getting rid of it safely by dumping the pills in the toilet and flushing, but I've heard that that can be yeah. bad for the rest of us yeah. because it doesn't get filtered out. Yeah, we, we uh, at the police department, we uh, burn them. So ah. it, it uh, goes in an incinerator and it's uh, done and over with. Okay. Uh, but I think that's really important. You know, if you have medication mm -hmm. that you're not using, mm -hmm. you don't want anybody else to be using it. So, okay. You know, and can they just it. drop in any time and drop it they, off? Well, or? they can't drop in any time, but they mm -hmm. can drop in during normal business hours okay. and, and somebody from the police department will take it. Okay. So we'll, we'll right. call an officer in, we'll take mm -hmm. it, we'll eventually have it destroyed. Okay, so that's that's good to know. So we've used our drug responsibly, yep. we've turned in the last of it. Now, who else is getting addicted in another, getting access in a different way? Well, you know, I mean, there are lots of opioids. So heroin is a big problem for mm -hmm. us right now. And it's, bec it's being laced with fentanyl, uh, which is another opioid, which is mm -hmm. very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that's what seems to have been causing a lot of the deaths that we are seeing mm -hmm. is the, the heroin laced with fentanyl. And the people don't realize that it's laced with fentanyl? I don't they don't understand I, the danger. I, don't, I think that it's been out there in the news, mm -hmm. but I think that people are, you know, they want, it's an addiction, so they want it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they don't necessarily care what is in it uh, mm -hmm. as long as it's powerful enough yeah. for them. Yeah. So, uh, you know, those people who are making it um, are mm -hmm. making it more powerful and therefore more addicting. So, I would be getting it on the street somewhere. You would be getting it from your local drug dealer. Okay. You know, my friend. Your friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those were air quotes, by the yeah, way. I friends. love doing air quotes. <laughs> your, your friend. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they're out there. Yeah. And, and it seems that people, you know, know how to get uh, mm -hmm. a friend, mm -hmm. air quotes, yeah. uh, who can provide them with the heroin. Yeah. So, right here in Londonderry? Oh, yeah. Any problem? No, no problem. Getting pro them? No problem. There's a, you know, unfortunately, most of it is coming from Lowell and Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And we have a, you know, we're 30 minutes from exactly. either one of those places. Yeah. Yeah. And so people will go there, will mm -hmm. buy it. And it's not just, uh, it's not Londonderry, it's every every town, right. it, you know. Th that's where it seems to be coming from. It's interesting most. because um, back in the 80s when Nancy Reagan start, started her Just Say No campaign, um, we had a big program over at the middle school. It was, uh, it was middle school again? Yeah, it's a middle school. and. We went along with her program that she put out to the country, and we did that, and then we formed anti-drug abuse groups in, in town. Yeah. Um, and at that time, it was the same thing. It was Most of the drugs were coming over from Massachusetts, no, from nothing, Lowell, Lawrence. You know, in 20 years, nothing has changed except for the fact, you know, we've had heroin before. It's not like heroin mm -hmm. is a new thing. I mean, heroin was in the 20s. Right. Um, it's been around forever. Mm -hmm. What's new and what's causing so much problem is the fentanyl that they're putting in because okay. it's making it so much stronger mm -hmm. um, that you know people are tending to overuse it and therefore overdosing. And, and that kind of leads into another part of this problem with the overdosing. Somebody takes the drugs, they go down and out and now we have Narcan. And now we have Narcan. 
Um, and we need to explain what Narcan so is. So Narcan for those kind of is, is uh, it basically takes away the effects of the drugs um, and uh, revives you. R revives you fairly quickly. It's become a very. Um, I, I mean, it, it has both its positive and negatives. Mm -hmm. Narcan is great. I mean, it will save somebody's life. It has saved hundreds of lives, maybe even thousands of lives. Um, but some of the those people who are addicted rely on it mm -hmm. and rely on the fact that you know if they I if revived. I take too much, mm -hmm. I can be revived. Mm -hmm. As long as somebody finds you, mm -hmm. you know. The problem is, yeah. you know, if you take too much, even if there's Narcan, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, every uh, fire department has Narcan. A lot mm -hmm. of other places have Narcan. But if you're not found in time, you're going to be dead. Mm -hmm. And and it's people have becoming to rely a little bit too much on Narcan, mm -hmm. um, which is also dangerous. You know. I, yeah. And I was just talking to somebody who was saying that the, I'm not going to get this 100% straight because they're much more scientific than I am. But that um, when they use the Narcan and, re, and the person is revived, there's only just so many times that person can be revived. Yeah. You know, we've had uh, instances where we in the fire department will respond mm -hmm. to somebody that's overdosed, and they'll they'll give them Narcan, um, and within hours they'll have you know they'll sometimes they're mad that they're that we've taken away their high, mm -hmm. and uh, but within hours they'll have you know have to be re mm -hmm. um again because they you know continue to do it, and you know at some point. You, you're not going to you're not going to survive, and I think that unfortunately that message hasn't got out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I guess it's hard to for them to understand if they're of a mindset that wants that high that has that addiction, yeah. their minds work differently than ours anyway. So to explain that to them would be difficult. Yeah, I mean everybody's addicted to something, you know. I no. love I love caffeine, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> and and I, I and I love chocolate. I, mm -hmm. I'm addicted to it, but it's yeah. not, you know. I know at some point I can say, all right, I've had too much chocolate. Mm -hmm. For some reason, with with especially heroin, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem they can shut it off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it does become beyond their control. It does. Uh, I know that there are um, places that have opened up to try and help people to, to get off the drugs and get well, because I think you can't just get off drugs and be well. Um, I'll use an analogy to... Uh, dealing with alcoholics to know that you can have a person who drinks profusely, you help them to stop, and they go on living their lives, but they're never really not an alcoholic. So they still are, but they are dry alcoholic, which, which means all those problems that they had that made them behave in that way are still there. They haven't been resolved. We're having a really hard time getting through the kids, especially, I think, that can start to understand that I don't just stop and that's it. Yeah, it's very difficult to stop. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and some, I, I've talked to some people who are addicted to heroin, and they are like, you know, I can't stop. And, um, and they totally and, believe that, and it's almost and true. And they totally believe that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have very few treatment options in New Hampshire. Um, always been short we, beds. O always been short beds. You know, there's, Derry has some, uh, you know, a, a private pay treatment facility mm -hmm. um, that, you know, seems to have done fairly good things. Um, but, you know, we, we have some in Manchester, mm -hmm. but there are o people always looking for beds. And, you know, the cost of it is very prohibitive. So if you're not if you're not wealthy, and mm -hmm. or if you're not on uh, well insured, well insured, or uh, have you know access to Medicaid or Medicare, mm -hmm. you, your likelihood of getting treatment is fairly slim unless it's yeah. court ordered. Yeah. And you know, in in Rockingham County and, and many other counties, we have a drug court, mm -hmm. um, which is seems to be helping some of those people who are addicted um, uh, to opioids mm -hmm. and other substances. Um, but even that, you know, it, it's fairly it's fairly new and, it, and it's difficult to be getting off mm -hmm. the street. And they have a difficult time placing people because, you know, right. if you're sending them home, mm -hmm. you know, that's a problem because that's where the that's problems where they have. lived when it started. Yeah. 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 And I so. know we're talking earlier uh, with some other people about how you have to change your life so completely. OK, you can't just get those drugs out of your system and then go home and hang out with your friends. Yeah. You got to get new friends. Sometimes you got to get you, different friends. You know, you know I've, I've had parents come to me and say, "Well, you know, what do I do?" And, and mm -hmm. I'm like, "Well, you know, 
sometimes I don't have a good answer for them. Um, but sometimes I'm like, you know, you can't let them hang around with these same friends. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to be new. It's, gotta be, it's gotta be new. And, and you know, mm -hmm. they'll say, well, should I send them away? And sometimes I'm like, the answer to that question is yes. Why not? You know, if, if your yeah. if your child is hanging around with somebody or some group of friends that are are having the same problem, mm -hmm. keeping them together is not a good answer. No, you, you, know? you wouldn't put your child deliberately in the in a position of danger. Yes. In any other case, you no. wouldn't stand them in the middle of the street in heavy traffic. Um, so, I know. Um, Back also, it was way back, I think it probably was the 80s, maybe early 90s, um, I was part of the uh, program at the high school, and the assistant principal and, who, and the, um, uh, what's her title, she had the pink room, Mrs. Boyle, anyway, Ed Boyle and, and uh, Mrs. Boyle who had ran the uh, in-school suspension, that's what it was, and they were constantly on the alert looking for things that were going on, trying to stay ahead of the kids of getting themselves yeah. in trouble this way. But one of the things that we did was we started a once a week uh, night at the, in the back office, little conference room, and parents were encouraged to come to that group and talk about parenting skills. And one of the things that used to always just floor me is someone would come in and we'd talk with them, and we tried very hard never to be judgmental. but. So many of them would come in and say, you know, I think my son, my daughter's using drugs. And we'll say, well, what makes you think that? And the behavior, unfortunately, at some ages, it's like it could be drugs, it could be puberty, yeah. <laughs> so you don't know. But one of the things that parents were reluctant to do was to go into their child's room and check. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. It's crazy. I mean, there was one person who we encouraged to do that, and she finally did, and she came to the next meeting, and she was like, I found this, I found this, I found this. They had hidden things up the top of the door, inside the frame. They had, at that point in time, they were doing a lot of things where they would take the insides out of a pen, so they could take that to school yeah. with them. But go ahead, what, what was so the... I'm glad you said that, because, you know, I have a... 15 and 16 year old boys. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I will re routinely do is I will take their phone from them. I will take, I will, uh, I will search what they've been doing on the phone. I will uh, mm -hmm. take their computer and search what they've been doing on the computer. Yeah. Um, and I will search their room um, because they're still my kids and I still need to protect them. Exactly. And if they're doing things that are inappropriate, mm -hmm. I want to know. Yeah. I, you know, I grabbed one of my kids' phones last night, and I saw a conversation between him and, and a young lady, mm -hmm. and I did not like the tenor of the conversation. And I'm like, you don't speak to a to a young woman like this mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. And he was extraordinarily embarrassed by the fact that I discovered the conversation. Yeah. But, you know, your job at parenting doesn't stop, you know. With feeding them and with feeding them, them to take care of them. You need sports, to, to yeah. provide them guidance their yeah. entire mm -hmm. life, uh, yeah. even beyond 18. Yeah. And I think that parents make a huge mistake saying, oh, you know, I, I've got to respect their privacy. Mm -hmm. that, you know, no, no. you absolutely <laughs> do not need to respect their privacy. They're your child living yeah. in your house. And mm -hmm. if they're doing things that are inappropriate uh, or that things that could hurt them, you need to know about it. So I, totally I would agree. encourage parents, yeah, search totally their agree. room, take their electronic devices, yeah. you pay for them, yeah. um, and find out what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, some, some parents are like, oh, I can't do that. Well, yes, you can. Yeah. You know, it, it, and it, I think it's a huge mistake mm -hmm. for those parents who don't. Mm -hmm. the, the other part of that is if you're the kind of parent who does do that sort of thing, your child can use that when they're trying to deal with the rest of the world. Yeah. I, when I was raising my daughter, there was one totally acceptable lie. If somebody wants you to do something that you're not comfortable with and you don't know how to get out of it, tell them that your mother will kill you. Yeah. And you're afraid that, and you know that I'll find out. And that can be your excuse. But I saw, even during the 80s, so many, which is when I brought my daughter up, there were so many things that were changing about the mindset with drugs and privacy for the children and all that sort of thing. And you put your kid first. I used to try and encourage as much as I possibly could. 
the friends came to my house. They hung out at my house. I knew where they were. I drove them to the mall. I drove them to the movie theater or whatever. So I tried to, you know, give her a safe environment to grow up in where she didn't have to prove yeah. to other kids that she was doing drugs or whatever. I, I've told uh, both my boys, uh, your mother is a police officer and your father is a prosecutor. Mm -hmm. If you get in trouble, you're going to be it. on the front page of yeah. the news. Um, not because of, of what, what you, you did, did, because yeah. of who your parents mm -hmm. are. Yeah. So, so if you need to use that, you mm -hmm. use it. Yeah. You, you, you just can't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that they respect that. Yes. You know, and, uh, but it's still, it's being diligent on the part of parents. Is, mm -hmm. it, I, that's the one thing that, you know, a lot of the things that I, I'll see kids who are getting in trouble mm -hmm. and I'll look at the parents and I'm, I'm like, well, what are you doing? You know, I can't save your child at 17 or 18 years old. Okay. That starts at two or three or four um, and when you're continues teaching on. Them to, you're the, the basic things, teaching them to respond yeah. positively to, no, uh, you can't do that. Yeah. And, and following through. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of, yeah. of parenting. And, you know, people will come to us and they have for uh, the 20 years I've been a prosecutor and mm -hmm. like, you know, my child's out of control. You know, Did it happen yesterday? Yeah, it certainly <laughs> didn't happen yesterday. It starts at yeah. a very young age, yeah, and and it uh, does. you know, there's mm -hmm. nothing that if your child's out of mm -hmm. control at 17 or 16, 17, yeah. there's nothing really we can do. You know, it's it's always been my belief that that you need to, in order to change the world, it's you need to make sure that your kids have the right kind of guidance to get there. Yeah, and I, I'm certainly not a perfect parent, but I, you know. I'm I not, don't know any perfect parents, Kevin. I don't, uh, but I, I, you know, I think that you you do the best you can, mm -hmm. and it, yeah. you know, this it, respecting mm -hmm. privacy of your child mm -hmm. only extends so far. Yeah, and it's it's also important um, to know the parents of the kids your child is hanging mm -hmm. around with because together you may spot things and learn things at a much earlier stage where you can do something. Yeah. Um, so I would encourage people to definitely, you yeah. know, kn if, know your kids' friends, have them at your house as much as you can, and make sure that other parents know what's going on, exchange with yeah. each other. Make sure you're joined a parenting group or... If, if your kids Boy don't Scouts want you... Whatever. Them to, if, if your kids don't want you to know their friends, There's then they're doing reason. something wrong. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. I would encourage parents mm -hmm. to, you know, make sure you know every one of their friends. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and what they're and doing. And the kids, <laughs> I live by the Constitution. I try to do what's right and not break the laws and all of that. But when you are checking into something that you believe your child is doing, you should just go ahead and do that and not respond to them saying you invaded my privacy i have a right to privacy no yeah, you don't your right, right to privacy you know stops at my door mm -hmm. and when you're 18 and you want to get out of your house uh, you i respect it. your right to privacy Absolutely. but you're living in my house it's my rule yeah yeah uh, so it's so important yeah, I, I, I would encourage parents mm -hmm. i mean you know if you if you're not doing mm -hmm. if you're not t checking your kids uh uh, online records, mm -hmm, yeah. you're making a huge mistake yeah. because, you know, they could be doing things that you have no mm -hmm. idea. And, yeah. I, you know, I know that from my own life. I know my kids are doing things because I check on them and I, and I spy on them. And, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that's just, they're going to have to get is. used to that. Yep. And, and I think that, you know, parents w will learn a lot about their kids, both good and bad. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you should know that. Yeah. Yeah, we need to I don't know how we got from opioids to, to parenting. Child parenting. Yeah, it's actually always been my belief, and my friends will tell you this, that it all starts with the parenting. Yeah. And it starts back when they are little, when yeah. they're one, two, three, four years old. And you just keep, you, you know, you just change the tone yeah. of the discipline or whatever as they grow, but you've got to start way back there. You yeah. can't take a seven-year-old that, that yeah. mouths off at you and expect they're not going to at 17. Yeah. So that's only gonna probably why I probably pulled it around to the parenting. Do you know what? It, it, it's, I was, until the day my mother died, mm -hmm. I was afraid of her. <laughs> I loved her. She, she was <laughs> great to me, but mm -hmm. I was afraid to do anything wrong. Yeah. yeah. I want to instill, instill a little of that <laughs> in my kids. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be, I don't need to be your friend. I need to be your parent. Yeah. And I need you to have a little healthy respect for yeah. me. And it's, if that's fear, it's so interesting that you say that because I was afraid of my father. Yeah. And I, at the time, 
I thought that was terrible that I was in that position. And I still don't think he was a really great parent. But I know how other people have been brought up and how they've ended up and how I ended up. And I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that I was afraid to get in trouble. Yeah. And I know that my daughter was too. I remember dropping her off about 10 years old with one of her friends. We dropped, she wanted to go to the library and do some research and really didn't want me to be there. So as they're getting out of the car at the library, my, I said, you behave yourself in there. And my daughter turned to her friend and said, yeah, she knows everybody here, too. So <laughs> like, okay, yeah. we're doing something right. But I, I think the parenting part's important. Connect with other parents. It gives you strength. Yeah. Strength in numbers, you know, coming together, I think that's a good thing. And you can kind of figure out the stories where this kid is saying, oh, no, no, I'm going to be over at, at so-and-so's house tonight. Yeah. And they never showed up there. The one thing That'll I happen. learned very early on in parenting is kids lie. Yeah. I had, I had my two-year-old son, who, or three, no, he was probably three, and he could tell the best lie, and I would almost believe it, except I knew that it wasn't true. Um, and he would stick by that lie mm -hmm. forever. And, yeah. and uh, even yesterday, he said to me, he said, I said, I asked his mother, I said, well, do you buy what he said about one of his grades and why he, mm -hmm. his grade uh -huh. was low? Yeah. And he says, what do you mean, do you buy it? I'm like, well, sometimes you don't tell the truth. <laughs> And he was, he was, I was fronted by that. I'm like, it's the truth, you know? <laughs> well, I said from, as soon as my daughter started talking, I kept saying, she's going to be a lawyer or a criminal because boy, she could really turn a good argument. Yeah. <laughs> and luckily she turned out to be the lawyer. So that yeah. was good. Yeah. But um, with all of these things, we did diverge a lot, but I think they all connect. And, and I hope that people can see that connection and maybe reach out to parenting groups. Do we have some parenting groups that are going on in town right now? You know, I don't know the answer to that. This, you know what I found to be the biggest resource is the, is the teachers and guidance counselors here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah. they know everything. Mm -hmm. They know who's, who's doing what and, right. and who's stay in on trouble. Top of it. Yeah. And if you're not talking with those people, mm -hmm. especially if your kid is, you know, having some issues, yeah. it's a big mistake. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they truly know, you know, I'll go often ask and say, you know, I, I, I'll have some uh, child in court and I'll say, you know, what do you know about this? And, and they give me a litany of things. Yeah. A and I know that they're accurate mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. they're with your kids yeah. a, a lot of the time of yeah. the day. And they're with your kids without parental supervision. So the kids are a little more freer with mm -hmm, them. And, mm -hmm. and I think that they're a huge asset that people yeah. often don't use. Yeah. Well, I know we do have a group in town. I think it's called the Moms Group. And I believe that they get together. They have very small children. But when I heard about them, I thought, this is great. Because hopefully they've made a connection that they'll keep throughout the school years yeah. and, and be able to help each other raise each other's children. Yeah. The quote, and we'll look out you know, for it each takes a village children. to raise a child, and yeah. it does. It really does. We've all got to be working off the same. Yeah. You know, I've had uh, parents call me about my children mm -hmm. if, you know, they think that something's wrong. And I, you know, I'm never offended by that. I'm, be I, grateful. I, I'm, I, I say thank you and mm -hmm. for letting me know, mm -hmm. both yeah. good and bad. Yeah. You know, if, if my child did something great, I want to mm -hmm. know it. And if yeah. my child did something bad, I want to know mm -hmm. it. And parents should be like that. Yeah, I agree. We're definitely going to do some more shows on parenting skills and, and uh, the opioid crisis and things like that. But there's something else going on in town and, well, in town all over the world, probably, probably. But um, there are a lot of scams out there. A lot of them seem to be directed at seniors, especially. They, uh, there are a lot of scams out there, and both, you know, local scams and, um, you know, national mm -hmm. scams. Uh, you know, you have the IRS scam that has oh, been ongoing. For I have gotten that call. This is so-and-so from the Internal Revenue Service, and you need to contact at this number immediately. And if you call the number, there's somebody there that answers. Oh, yeah. The number that came up on your caller ID, however, you can't get back to. Yeah. So there's, and if anybody knows who the, well, the IRS Jacqueline Orr is, I want to know if she exists. I don't think she does. I think somebody stole the phone number, and they run it all through that phone number, and every time you look at your caller ID, well, you're they, seeing your real name. They, they can spoof phone numbers, which basically mm. is 
taking somebody's name and you know saying that this is their number yep. and, and that happens all the time mm -hmm. you know and they've done it to the police department they've they've, oh, yeah, they've, they've done it to it's you know people will say that the call came from the Londonderry Police Department mm -hmm. um, and you know we'll have people call us up and say hey we we got this call and and we're and luckily they call us Mm -hmm. um, and we say, yeah, we didn't. Yeah, don't call those back. We, we didn't call you. Yeah. Um, and, but some of the other things that, are, that people need to be careful about, and we're seeing a lot, is people will go to Market Basket mm -hmm. or any shop. I shouldn't say Market Basket, but any shopping any plaza. Yeah. And they'll put their basket, their uh, pocketbook in the cart. Yes. And people just lift those right mm -hmm. up. And yeah. then they take your credit cards, and within mm -hmm. hours, your credit cards are charged Run to the up, max. Yeah. Um, and you know that's a, an ongoing scam mm -hmm. that we see. And and yeah. you know sometimes they'll they'll take one credit card mm -hmm. that you won't m might not no, even see missing. Um, and you know yeah, we've had people taken for you know thousands and thousands yeah. of dollars. Um, and I just hate to see that happen to people. And, um, and I, it usually I, is yeah, and and. It, totally understandable that it happens because I know I'll be going through Market Basket and it's like a, or, or any, like you said, any, guess where we shop? Yeah. <laughs> or any store where you put your pocketbook in the seat. You don't have to get yeah. to put it in there anymore. You put the, the pocketbook in yeah. there. And it's abandoned. It's like, where's the person who owns this carriage? Yeah. Because the purse is right there and they're nowhere in sight, and then they'll just come around the corner and get their wagon and take off. The great part for us is Market Basket has the best video surveillance around. Do they? So, you know, when that happens, usually we can identify mm -hmm. who it is, but a lot of times they're from out of state and, you know, who knows? They're, yeah. they're gone. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what I found is right now being careful with your credit and mm -hmm. debit cards is really important. Really important. Because people are, you know, we had, uh, uh, scam, we have scams all the time with uh, people using credit, phony credit card numbers. And if they get a hold of your credit card number, you know, within hours it, they could have maxed your credit mm -hmm. limit. Yeah. Um, and you really need to be careful with who you're giving your numbers to, mm -hmm. uh, especially the expiration date and the last three digits on the back or four mm -hmm. digits, depending yeah. on what it is. Yeah. Because people are taking those and using them so fast, mm -hmm. it's very dangerous. Yeah. You need to be also, uh, I don't think people are fully aware of this, but when your mail comes in, don't just toss the things that you don't want. If they've got any of your information on there, shred them. Yeah. Or they have those new stamps where you can stamp out the address and the phone number. The shredding's easier, I think. Yeah. But shred them. Don't assume that because we live in Londonderry. It's not going to happen here. Crime yeah. occurs in Londonderry. You know, yep. We're a rich target. We are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, let's see. So the the mail when somebody gets something in the mail, don't respond to it. Just shred it and put it in the in the yep. basket. But if somebody calls you, I've heard a couple of people say, "Well, I called back that number and I gave them what for." Well, they get information out of you yeah. because you called back. The best thing I think to do is if you are a target of that, is to report it to the police department mm -hmm. because we keep track of of, yeah. of those things mm -hmm. um, and you know we can act upon them if uh, a lot of them are out of state mm -hmm. sometimes out of the country yeah. but we can act upon them um, so you shouldn't just ignore them you shouldn't uh, you know you should say hey mm -hmm. I'm the target of right. this particular scam yeah and London Dairy Times has been great about yeah. putting things in the paper when mm -hmm. those things are found yeah. out to put an article here or there yeah, saying they, you know watch out for this so that's helpful too um, we, we mentioned that IRS scam have, have you had any other Scams recently that we can kind of name that people should watch out for. Uh, I know it's hard. There are so many. There are so many yeah. that we've had, and we've had some that people, you know, are going to your door, mm -hmm. which yeah. is even scarier. I you heard know, about that. the, the yeah. phone call is bad enough, but when people are going mm -hmm. to your door, you know, offering you, you know, products or services, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you got to be real, yeah. real careful. Things like we've got some extra. Um, uh, Pavement. Pavement, that's yeah. what I was looking for. Extra uh, pavement, we can do your driveway for this yeah. much. And, and, and a, a lot of times if people are just looking to get into your house mm -hmm. to see what you have. Yeah. Um, you know, so it may seem an innocuous uh, mm -hmm. call, but a lot of times people are just looking to get in your house yeah. to see what it is that you have and perhaps what they can steal. And I think the hardest thing for me is I live in London, Jerry, okay? When I first moved into London, Jerry, I didn't even lock my doors. 
And over the years, of course, I've started locking the door. I don't want anybody to steal the puppy, that's why. But <laughs> they can take my stuff, don't touch my puppy. But the um, getting, getting past that, you want to live in that kind of a town where you feel like you can leave your doors open. But we can't do that anymore. I, you know, <laughs> I think that Londonderry is, I mean, Londonderry is a great community. Mm. It's very oh, safe, yeah. Yeah. you know, comparison-wise, mm -hmm. it's very safe. But like every town, we have our problems. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, the problems come from outside our town. Like, you know, with, with the heroin problem, mm -hmm. you know, we'll have people, we've had a lot, I'm sure you've heard about it, we've had a lot of break-ins. Um, they have to support those yeah, they habits. Have to, yeah, they ha yeah, and you know, they come to places where it's an easy target mm -hmm. um, and that there's likely to be, uh, you know, something to steal. Right. Um, and Londonderry is one of those places. Um, so we I think do it, have stuff. Yeah, <laughs> be, being diligent is a really good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what we really like at the fire, the police department, is those people who have home security systems that have cameras. Yes. You know, th that's yeah. been that's been a godsend to us. Yeah. yeah. You know. Do you have that whole forensic thing where you do face recognition that goes across? We, we, we don't. We don't even <laughs> need to get that sophisticated. A lot of times, people you can find will. It up there was one time. one individual who broke into a house, stared right into the camera like this. <laughs> And and all and we didn't know who it was, but all we had to do was put it on channel nine. And, there and was. people <laughs> were I mean, the ex wives were calling saying, Hey, this is who it is. Um, and you know, it, it's it, if you're investing in, in a security system, get one with a camera. Okay. Good uh, to know. Good to know. It, it helps people out. Any other advice that we should give people right now or if we I don't know. Um, you know, Again, Londonderry is a, a great place to be, mm -hmm. uh, a great town to live in, um, and uh, I think people are lucky to have, you know, a good, a good uh, police department, a good mm -hmm. fire department, mm -hmm. um, and you know, good place to raise their a kids. Good, a great school system, yeah. a great place to raise their kids. Mm -hmm. But you know, you still have to be diligent. Yes, and I always about always. Uh, you know, there are there are people mm -hmm. out there who will target you, mm -hmm. um, and I think you always have to be careful. Yeah. Okay, I agree with that. And I think that one of the other things I want to mention again is that you can come on and talk about anything you want on this show. Kevin and I just had a conversation. I don't invite people on so I can fight with them. I want to share the information that they have or that they want to get out there. So you know, give us a call. The information's at the end of the show. The other thing I'd like to encourage you to do is get involved with the Lunadary Access Center. There are a lot of different roles that you can play here, director, camera operator, audio. Um, you can be a host. You can be a guest. So think a little bit outside that box this week, and I hope to hear from some of you very soon. Thank you for watching, and Kevin, thank Thanks. you for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me on. Very glad to have it. you. That was good information for people. I like it. Thank you.